As you may have heard, Elon Musk recently moved to Texas, and with it, his pursuit of colonizing Mars, the inhospitable planet whose environment fits the god of war it was named after perfectly. At first glance, Mars seems very similar to Earth. It has atmosphere, water, and soil, but it's actually the Texas of the entire galaxy. Everything is trying to kill you, and there's no horses to save any Texans up there. But who knows, maybe there are alien horses, which might not be a good thing now that I think about it, because they'll try to kill us, but we'll get to that later. Just like Texas, everything on Mars is dangerous. The first challenge any expedition to colonize Mars would have is learning how to breathe on Mars. The Martian atmosphere is mostly composed of carbon dioxide and cannot be breathed in. And although Texas is said to inhale brisket, it is difficult to fly enough brisket even for a single Texan to survive one second on Mars. Realistically, NASA has funded the concept of a biodome. A biodome is a semisphere of transparent glass or plastic material filled with algae, convert the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into breathable oxygen for future expeditions. These can be planted years ahead of time to terraform part of the planet that would be used for some of the infrastructure and supply the astronauts with air once they land. This won't mean we can breathe Martian air anytime soon without dying. It isn't meant to terraform the entire planet, but that alone would make it easier to breathe just a little bit. Botany can't fix the entire planet. However, the Martian movie memes will skyrocket in value, so invest now. Botany is the future. Jokes aside, it's going to take something from the Superman movie to terraform the entire planet. The most realistic approach has been to place a supermagnet with a little less gauss than an MRI machine. Its orbit would be synced with Mars to shield it from magnetic rays, protecting the red planet's atmosphere from disappearing. That alone would make Martian air easier to breathe, assuming aliens don't kill us first, you know, if they do end up existing once we send somebody to Mars. Prometheus and Alien were both unrealistic movies. Evil monsters and stupid decisions I can overlook, but the space dust would kill more people than tornadoes in Texas and those aliens combined. Unless space dust can be removed, solar panels will be close to only 10% effectiveness compared to Earth, and robots won't be able to function due to the dust gained into every circuit. It would be like dropping your robots into water just by bringing them outside. No matter how oxygenated it is, the air couldn't be breathed unless we drastically increase the oxygen in it. But how do you dust an entire planet? Again, the solution is magnets. Similar to a smokestack, electrostatic precipitators could remove dust and harmful chemicals by applying an electrostatic charge and attracting it using an oppositely charged electrode. If we build these on a larger Texas sized scale, the dust storms that plague Mars could be removed in as soon as two to three years. Powering any Martian technology can't be done before the dust is removed using solar panels, so it's more probable that nuclear reactors would have to be used first. The atmosphere is not only unbreathable, but it's full of harmful radiation from the sun. Nuclear reactors are the least of your problems, and will give you a lot less cancer than the sun. With no atmosphere or magnets to block radiation, nobody could survive for extended periods of time. It would be like doing a spacewalk outside the International Space Station for months on end. Since Texas is nine months travel at the fastest, and yes, Texans still use time to measure distance, despite me introducing the imperial system. It's imperative to protect astronauts from radiation. One low-cost way is to create bricks from Martian dirt that is stronger than steel by pounding it with the equivalent of a 10-pound hammer. With enough layers of bricks, radiation would be lowered to tolerable levels inside whatever houses we create. But it would require hundreds of tons of bricks. So many bricks that in fact it would make the YouTube channel half as interesting proud of this. But why build houses at all? Elon Musk has companies, including the Boring Project. It's not interesting. It bores tunnels 30 feet wide, deep underneath the surface of the Earth to create high-speed travel between two points. On Mars, this could be used to build subterranean cities, and it's possible to do both, especially when you consider it's easier to mine through the crust of Mars than crust of Earth because you don't have to deal with permits. If you recycle the dirt used to create the tunnels, you can create bricks on the surface. These could form the structures for farms, solar city plants, and infrastructure for spaceports. Or you could sell them on eBay because, you know, NASA needs more money. All in all, Mars is deadly, unbreathable, potentially inhabited by aliens, and is bad for your skin. Hopefully, we can use technology that exists right now to terraform Mars within the next 10 to 20 years, so that it is livable and creates lots of jobs in the process. We have the will, the determination, and the money to do all of this within our life. So please, 
write to your leaders and petition for more science spending because we need it. Only after that can you crown Elon Musk the king of Mars.